Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for Canada. The picture that you are seeing behind me is not here just for philosophical purposes, rather it has a very deep purpose and that purpose is that this is one of the news topic of today. So I will discuss about this lake and its importance, but since it is the beginning of the session, then why do we want to make it more complex in the beginning itself? So let's start it on a light note. So guys, since this water is there in this picture, it is reminding me of a very beautiful line which I have just read uh, yesterday. So that line was that you can see your reflection only in the still water. The water which is wavering does not produce any reflection. Similarly, the mind which is not still cannot produce any result. So try to work on your mind, make yourself calm and still. And how will you do that? You will only do that with uh, by sitting with yourself. Okay. So try to meditate, try to do the activity which you like the most in 10 to 15 minutes in one day. At least 10 to 15 minutes. So apne liye nikalo yaar. Itna to zaruri hai life mein. Theek hai? So let's begin today's class on that beautiful note. Uh, I hope you are aware of the mobile applications. So I'm just beginning with the question number one itself. And this question, let me tell you friends, it is going to be a very heavy question loaded with a lot of facts. So do listen to me very carefully. Okay. So what is the theme of strategic tabletop exercise of G20? So here you have the five options out of which option A is the right answer. Now, if you read about this exercise, you would understand that this exercise is not a military exercise, rather it is a cyber security exercise. Okay, and if you had read about it only then you could have mentioned this as the right answer. Okay, if you have a little bit of knowledge, then this question would be a very easy question for all of you because only this option has cyber in its name or in its uh, entire sentence okay so such type of questions can be tackled even if you have an overview of the news but don't expect such type of easy questions uh, in the examination or rather i should say that you can expect one or two questions like these but you have 80 questions in rj grade b and majority of the questions are going to be tough okay this was an easy question because sare questions to ekdam difficult level ke nahi banaye jate kuch questions aise bhi banaye jate paper mein okay so all the questions that i prepare in your spotlight magazine and i take from spotlight only so all these questions are made on the rbs abn awards pattern only okay so you can see yourself how how much the level has been increased and what type of questions are being asked now let's uh, discuss this news first of all this news was organized under the ages of not the news but the exercises were organized under the ages of the ministry of electronics and information technology okay secondly the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, which is called as CERT in, in short form, has organized both the exercises. Okay, so it was the nodal agency for organizing these exercises. Now, this is a part of the G20 cyber security exercise and drill. Okay, so here two uh, I would say exercises were conducted. One is your security exercise, cyber security exercise, and another one is the operational drill. And guys, both of these exercises have their own themes, okay? So that makes it a little difficult news to remember, but yes, you have the theme. And for G20, I have already told you what is the rescue solution. You need to prepare a sheet for yourself and prepare the G20 meetings, their themes, and everything that is coming up on the lines of GD, G20. Okay, now, strategic tabletop exercise, okay, the theme of this exercise uh, is synergy to counter global cyber crisis, okay, and the theme of the operational drill is building collective cyber resilience. Both of these are focused on the cyber security only because this, uh, these exercises are organized by the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. Okay, so what else could be the subject matter of these exercises if it is not cyber security? Okay, so cyber security is the main issue. Okay, so in the knowledge nuggets, I have provided you some background information about this organization called 
certain because it is a very important organization and it has gained a lot of significance in the recent times because we have seen a lot of emphasis being laid on the cyber security. So that is why this becomes a lot more important. Now, India Computer Emergency Response Team, it was created in 2004. Okay, and it gains its powers from the Information Technology Amendment Act of 2008. Okay, so that is also important. And now it is the emergency response team for the computer. So all kinds of cyber emergencies are tackled by the CERT it, and that is all that you need to remember. One more thing that it is under the ages of Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So do remember this part. Now, although this my this is a blank map, but here you are going to be loaded with a lot of facts and all those facts are very relevant. So I'm going to begin with the G20 only because we have just read about the G20. So it would be a very good exercise if we revise the facts related to G20 in very short period of time. Okay, so once in a while we will be revising the facts related to G20. So first fact is, that G20 was created in 1999, okay? Second fact is that G20 does not have its own secretariat or headquarters. The country which holds the presidency undertakes all the secretariat level work of the G20. Third is that the 2023 edition of the G20 uh, is being hosted by India and it is the 18th summit. One earth, one family is the theme, okay? That is Masudhevam Kutumbaka is the theme of this year's summit, okay? Now, one more thing that 19th summit will be organized by Brazil in 2024 and 20th summit will be organized by South Africa in 2025. Okay, look at this picture again and again because this picture will help you in retaining the facts for a longer period of time. And in case you want a screenshot, you can click a screenshot. Okay, so these are the facts related to G20. Now, I'm going to tell you about the countries of G20. Okay, and precisely that is why I have put this world map here. So guys, first of all, you have to remember G7 countries. Okay, G7 is a grouping of the world's most developed industrialized nations. So, G7 is the first US, Canada, UK. Uh, sorry, this is not UK, this is the Scandinavian countries. Uh, this is UK. UK, then we have France. France, Germany, Italy, and we have Japan. Okay, these are the seven countries of the G7. Isse aapka G7 bhi yaad hoga. Dhyan rakhe. These are the seven countries of the G7. Then what happened? Russia was the G8 country which was kicked out in 2020 in 2014 after the Crimean Peninsula uh, annexation. Okay, if you don't remember that much, don't. Try to remember it. It is just for your information because if you have background facts, you will be to remember it. Okay? So these are the G7 and uh, this was the G8 country which was kicked out of the forum. Then after these countries, now comes the triangle. That triangle is China, India and Indonesia. Then which country is the closest to Indonesia? It is Australia. Then we travel from Australia to South Korea. Okay, South Korea say we will travel to Turkey. Now, Turkey or South Korea ka ek relation. If you understand that relation, then it will be very easy for you to jump from here to here in your mind itself in the examination hall. Okay, and that relation is that Turkey supplies the nuclear material or the weapons to North Korea, which makes Turkey a direct enemy of South Korea. It will be very easy for you to remember that after South Korea, we have to jump to Turkey. Now, which country is the closest neighbor of Turkey? It is Saudi Arabia. Then we have South Africa. Then we have Mexico, Brazil, and we have Argentina. And the 20th member is the EU, the European Union. 
okay so in this manner if this helps you in remembering the countries of g20 it is well and good in case you are not able to remember the g20 countries through this uh, story or through this mapping then you can use the trick given on the google or you can create a trick of your own okay so these were the g20 countries that i wanted to highlight now one more thing and it is not about g20 it is about the other important summit so india in 2023 is hosting the g20 summit plus the sco summit okay so you can clearly position india as a very important location as a very important country for the entire world not only we are targeting the entire world but we are also focusing on this area the central asian region through sco okay now one more forum which is important that is brics so 2023 BRICS summit will be hosted by South Africa. Okay, so these are the summits which will be held in this year only, and I have already told you the upcoming summits of the G20. Nineteenth summit will be held in Brazil, and twentieth summit will be hosted by South Africa again. I hope, guys, these facts are not uh, creating any confusion in your mind. In case they are con creating confusion, then you can pause the video, uh, see the entire thing again, and try to. Uh, memorize the facts okay so we have discussed everything okay for so before moving on to the next question tell me the members of the sco sco countries kitni hai aur kaun kaun si hai this is your task do tell <coughs> okay so the question number Second is the government has approved phase two of the FAME scheme with an outlay of rupees ten thousand crore for a period of rupee uh, of three years, commencing from first April twenty nineteen. Out of the total budgetary support, about eighty six percent of the fund has been allocated for the demand incentive so as to create demand for the EVs in the country. According to the Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises data, the top five states in India. Collectively, account for over fifty-six percent of zero point eight five million electrical electric vehicles bought through the scheme. Choose the correct order of states in the increasing order of their sales. So, I hope you have judged the level of examination through this question. Okay, question number one was a was an easy bit, but question number two is not so. And guys. here i just want to tell you look at the examination pattern look at the past years this is the pattern and now you have to uh, prepare really hard for the examination and now your examination is approaching really fast we are expecting the notification to come out towards the end of this month or in the beginning of march and you hardly have uh, one month okay so prepare hard or current affairs ka to bahut hi bada proportion hai if you don't cover the current affairs you won't be able to clear the phase one itself okay so now coming back to the question so what is the right answer it is option d okay <coughs> oh i'm sorry guys for the cough okay so what has happened recently in the parliament the ministry of heavy industries and public enterprises has released the data the data is about the sales of the electric vehicles and according to that data maharashtra has sold the maximum number of vehicles followed by karnataka then we have tamil nadu gujarat and rajasthan so these are the top 5 states which have sold the maximum number of electric vehicles and the these five states account for uh, 56% of the total electric vehicle sales in the uh, fame 2 scheme okay so that is why it is an important data so do remember this thing that these are the five important states now there is nothing much to be discussed in the question number 2 i hope you have covered the fame india scheme there are two phases of the fame india scheme and in 2015 the scheme was launched okay the first phase was launched in 2015 and the second phase was launched in 2019 and the basic idea of fame is fame basically stands for faster adoption of um uh, the uh, man, uh, faster adoption and manufacturing of electric and hybrid vehicles 
okay so that is the full form of fame scheme and we have two phases so not only the creation of infrastructure is emphasized in the fame india scheme but the emphasis is also on the creation of demand okay so how can we create the demand by giving the incentives to the public who is going to buy the ultimate good that is the ev therefore the gst on the electric vehicles has been reduced from 12% to 5% so that we can incentivize the ultimate consumer not only the gst but uh, the loan concessions and other benefits are also given to the consumers as well as the retailers also so that they buy, they sell more and more electric vehicles okay so that's the overview of the fame india scheme but this scheme is not limited only to these facts okay it has a lot more information which you need to cover from the government scheme pdf coming to the question number 3 so a uh, total of rupees 7980 crore <coughs> has been committed to 99 alternative investment funds under the fund of fund scheme for startups as on december 31st 2022 the fund of funds for startup scheme was approved and established in dash with a corpus of dash with contribution spread over the 14th and 15th finance commission cycle based on the progress of implementation to provide capital to the indian startup dash has been given the responsibility of choosing the aifs and overseeing the disbursal of the committed capital so what is the right answer now guys you would be thinking that these questions are really tough and such type of questions are asked in the phase 2 esr then why have we uh, brought such questions in the phase 1 video guys please do not be under this misconception that such type of questions are only asked in the phase 2 right now in phase 1 also such type of questions have been asked in the last years uh, rb examination you must have seen if you have appeared for the examination or if you have uh prepared from the past year you must have seen that the questions length was this much only and questions options were also difficult okay so you have to prepare according to the best level now what is the right answer so here guys the right answer is option c okay 2016 mein this fund of funds for startup scheme was launched and 10000 crore was the initial outlay of this scheme and sidbi has been given this responsibility to choose the ai now let me tell you what is the scheme so i'm going to give you the overview of the scheme so that you have the basic understanding and then we will move into the news deeply okay so first of all this fund of funds for startups under this what happens that sidbi chooses the alternative investment funds the suitable alternative investment funds what is the meaning of suitable there would be a certain uh, eligibility criteria for the aifs to get enrolled in this scheme okay so these aifs are also called the daughter funds theek hai so sidbi has the responsibility of choosing the daughter funds and then these funds invest in startups either in the form of equity major majorly in the form of equity only or debt okay so this is how this fund is giving the money to the startups indirectly okay aur isse benefit kya ho raha hai isse benefit ye ho raha hai ki in aifs ko bhi mauka mil raha hai zyada se zyada investment karne ka and explore karne ka indian market and also they are also uh, getting some commission or fee on this money uh, transferring or this investment thing and the third benefit is that the people who are managing the alternative investment funds are qualified investment managers okay so government is uh, is saving on the cost of hiring the investment managers because now what what will it do it will just select the aifs and the aif will then do the work of screening the best of the best startups and in those startups the money will be invested so isse government ka bhi kharcha bach raha hai aifs ko bhi mauka mil raha hai taki wo aur commission kama sake aur profit mana sake aur startups ko bhi paise mil rahe so it is a win win situation for all the stakeholders okay so this is the overview or the mechanism of this scheme now let's dig deeper into the news so the news is 
that this much amount has been spent on this scheme and uh, we know that the initial corpus was 10,000 crore. So out of 10,000, approximately 8,000 crores have been spent, approximately, okay? So these amount, this amount has been given to 99 alternative investment funds. Oh, and they are going to invest in these startups. Now, this statement we, statement we have just read in the question itself that in 2016, this scheme was launched with 10,000 crore rupee corpus. The next thing, uh, thing is that huh, this scheme does not directly invest in the startups, rather it chooses the AIFs, which are also called the daughter funds. And then these daughter funds invest in equity or equity linked instruments, okay? So they do not invest in debt securities, they directly invest in the equity of the startup, okay? Sidhvi, Small Industries Development Bank of India was given the responsibility of uh, choosing the AIFs, the daughter funds, who will give the money to the startups. And Sidhvi also oversees the dispersal of fund, whether the AIFs are uh, providing the fund in the right, man right time or not. Then, uh, state-wise distribution of startups under the scheme as on Dece 31st December 2022 is given in this picture. Okay, so here you can clearly see that these many startups are there from these states and this much amount has been given uh, to these startups from these states under the fund of fund scheme and this data is very, very important. You can expect a question out of this. Okay, for example, like the previous question, you can be asked a question in the ascending order also in the in terms of their fund. So prepare from that angle also. Now one more thing that this is the data of 31st December 2022 and right now we are in February 2023. So why are we discussing the December data? The reason is that this data was revealed by the government in the parliament and that is why we are discussing about it here. So let's have a look at this data. So Karnataka has the highest number of startups and we rightly call Karnataka as the emerging valley of the Silicon Valley of India is Bangalore and Karnataka is also emerging as the startup hub of India. So 240 startups are there and the maximum amount has been given to Karnataka. At the second number, we have Maharashtra. Then we have Delhi, we have Haryana, we have Tamil Nadu and these are the number of startups and this much is the amount given under the fund of funds scheme. Okay. okay, so this is the last thing from this question, then we will move on to the next question. And don't think that I have missed something on this slide, I have deliberately kept it empty so that I can put the words here in front of you only. Okay, it's your understanding. So pay attention to this. Now guys, what is mutual fund? Mutual fund, mein toh, you all invest, okay? Majority of you must have invested in mutual funds or your friends, your parents must have invest, uh, must be doing investments in the mutual fund. So what is mutual fund? Mutual fund basically collects the money from the investors. I hope it is visible. Okay, so these are the investors. From these investors, the money is collected and pooled in the mutual fund. Then this mutual fund invest in the stock that is equity or debt instruments. Now, what is the benefit of this? We all know that now these mutual funds have the qualified investment managers. Therefore, the money is saved and we get the higher uh, return on our investment. That's why we choose mutual fund because we do not want to take active participation in that or this risk covers the hotel. Now, what are the alternative investment funds? Okay, before moving ahead, there is one more fact that we have a separate regulation for the mutual fund that is SEBI mutual fund regulation. Okay, so there is a separate regulation with the name of mutual fund itself. Now let's come to alternative investment fund. These alternative investment funds also pool money from the investors. They collect the money from the investors and then they invest in new kind of securities. Okay. We have the conventional securities like debt and equity, but the AIFs, 
do not invest in the conventional securities like debt, uh, like stocks and uh, the bonds or equities. Rather, they invest in the new kind of uh, products. For example, hedge funds have private equity funds. Have. So these are the examples of alternative investment funds. You are REITs, real estate investment fund, INVITS, the infrastructure investment funds. All of these are examples of alternative investment funds because here what we are seeking, we are seeking the alternative means for investing our money into that. Okay, I hope you are understanding. So they seek new opportunities, new investment opportunities or securities in which they can put their money. Now there are three types of three categories of AIFs in India. AI category one, category two, and category three. Now what? Why is it important? The reason is that the category one AIFs get the maximum amount of concession from the government. Category two may kuch logo ko milta hai, kuch type of funds ko milta. For example, if there is a uh, fund for developing the infrastructure, then that fund will be uh, incentivized by the government in the form of concessions on tax or anything. Then we have the category three funds in which we have the hedge funds or other kinds of funds. Hai? Now these funds are not, uh, do not get any kind of relaxation from the government. And this can be a question either in your phase one or phase two that how many categories are there for the AIFs in India. So you should be aware of that. The last point is that there is another regulation for it. SEBI AIF regulation. Hai? So do remember this one. The last but not the least because we have just read about the fund of fund scheme for the government. So what exactly this product type? So fund of fund is basically the fund which collects money from the which collects money from the investors. Same. Okay, pooling of money is done. But it invests in another fund. Okay, here what is happening? The investment is done in a security. Although that type is new, here what is happening? Again, security, but what is happening here? Here the investment is done in the fund. That fund could be a mutual fund. That fund could, fund could be an AIF. Okay, suppose there is a fund which invests in a mutual fund that that fund would be called as a fund of funds. Okay, I hope. Uh, this is making sense to all of you and you are understanding the basic difference between these three categories of investment products because these three sound similar, work on a similar basis, but they have a very distinct difference, okay, I, which is now clear to all of you, I hope. In case you have any kind of uh, doubt, you can ask me. Okay, so the next question is, Which state has announced to establish the green hydrogen hubs at a cost of 200 crores? So here, Kerala is the right answer. Now, what are the green hydrogen hubs? Basically, the green hydrogen plants. Okay. They are being called hubs because not only the green hydrogen will be created, but the entire ecosystem will be developed. Employment ecosystem will be developed. Okay, so Kerala has announced to establish these hubs for the green hydrogen manufacturing plants at two places at present, Kochi and Tiruvananthapuram. These plants are going to produce 60 tons of hydrogen per day. And uh, India Hydrogen Alliance is going to help in the implementation of these uh, hubs. Now, what is the India Hydrogen H Alliance? Initially, I also thought that this India Hydrogen Alliance is an international organization. Like we have the ISA, we have the, uh, uh, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. But guys, this is not an international organization. Rather, it is a private alliance of private companies which are going to help in creation of the hydrogen infrastructure. Okay? So here you can clearly see the experts, agencies, the industry, all of them will come together and help in developing these plants. The headquarters of this IH2A is in New Delhi. Now guys, this is not only in India. I have already told you that hydrogen is seen as the fuel of the future. Therefore, 
uh, a lot of countries are counting on hydrogen and they are developing the hydrogen hub. Like USA is developing the Europe, China, Japan, Australia, all of them are creating the hydrogen hub, hydrogen plants. And not only the plants, but the entire ecosystem of the surrounding area. For example, the employment opportunities and everything will be linked to the creation of hydrogen. So that area is being called as the hydrogen valley. Okay, so this is a new term, hydrogen valley project. But it is just a term, concept is same. They are basically setting up the green hydrogen manufacturing plants. Nothing else is there. So don't get confused with this name, hydrogen valley, hydrogen hubs. It is nothing, just the plants, okay, at present. So they will have the production, storage and distribution facilities also. Last but not the least, the different types of hydrogen. And I'm very grateful to this Applied Economics Clinic, which has uh, mentioned all these hydrogens in this picture. So you can clearly see these different types of hydrogens. We had only thought about two to three uh, types of hydrogen, like gray, black, brown, or the green hydrogen. But there are multiple hydrogens available in the market. And there is one connection in this picture. Rest you can read on your own. I have explained it many times. So this yellow hydrogen is created from the solar energy. So that's the, that is why it is called yellow. Last question. Yaya So, known as the bird's paradise for its beautiful lake, located at an altitude of 4,820 meters, has been proposed as Ladakh's first heritage, biodiversity heritage site under the Bio Biological Diversity Act of 2002. The resolution was signed after the multiple rounds of consultation between the village stakeholders and Secure Himalaya Project to declare the high altitude lake and its catchment as a biodiversity site, biodiversity heritage site, under which section of the Biological Diversity Act of 2002 does the state government in consultation with the local bodies notify the areas of biodiversity importance as biodiversity heritage site. So this is a very difficult question because uh, nobody would have expected that a question out of a section from an act, from a random act would be asked. But this is how the examiner's mind works. At least my mind works in this manner. You never know what would be there in the examiner's mind. So prepare yourself from all sides. Now, what is the right answer? The right answer is option B, section 37. Now guys, the news is that this beautiful lake uh, has been converted or rather a tag has been given to this site as the biological, sorry, biodiversity heritage site. Now, first of all, what is the benefit of it? Obviously, under a law, this site has been given a tag. So obviously, its conservation would be increased. And because its conservation would be increased and there would be a restriction on certain activities by the humans around this area that is why the consultation is needed between the local communities and the state governments okay so i hope now it is making sense that why do we need to consult with the local government local people before classifying any region as the heritage biodiversity heritage site so that is the reason because up bahut other restrictions hongi is area ke aas pass so the facts to be noted here first is the Dark's first biodiversity heritage site hai, Yaya So, under the Biological Diversity Act of 2002. Then, Section 37 has this provision of giving the tag of biological heritage site to the biodiversity heritage site to the different uh, locations. The other important fact here is that the secure himalaya project was involved in the negotiations for classifying this specific site as the heritage site okay now what is the secure himalaya project i am going to tell you just one second i want to tell you the lg of ladakh because that is very important which is rk mathur okay do remember rk dada krishna mathur naam yaad now this secure Himalaya project. What is it? It is basically from the name itself, it is very evident that it aims to work for the biodiversity conservation of the Himalayan region. 
Now the most important fact or rather the only fact that makes this project very important is that it is funded by a UN fund. That is the Global Environment Facility which is a fund of the United Nations based in New York. Okay? So this fund basically gives the funding to the lower uh, income and middle income uh, countries so that they can work for the biodiversity conservation. Okay? Developing countries could be a fund data. So that is all. Now this Secure Himalaya project is also affiliated or work in conjunction with the Global Snow Leopard Ecosystem Projection Protection Program also. Okay? That is all in my opinion. Last and this is the last one. So guys, uh, there is one lake which was very much in the news because of the India-China conflict around this lake, which is the Pangong So Lake. Okay, so its complete name is Pangong So Lake. And this lake is at this location. Okay, so this is the location of lake. And this is the LAC. Okay, and you can clearly see that it is going through the lake and that is why the dispute originated. Okay, China tried to violate the LAC and then the entire thing started off. Okay, then Galwan Valley may be the same thing happened in Tawang in Arunachal Pratesh also. China tried to infiltrate in our borders and that is why the thing happened. So here this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the current affairs. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. And in case you have any kind of feedback, you can provide it in the comment section or on our WhatsApp number. Good luck guys, prepare really hard and do remember what I said to you in the beginning itself. Only still water creates the reflection and if you want to see the results, you have to become still. You have to become calm. Okay, so work on that. Goodbye.